Okay, we're recording. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, I'll call the North Smithfield School Committee meeting of November 17, 2020 to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Lombardi. Present. Mr. Rest. Here. Mr. Connell. Here. Mrs. Johannes. Here. Mr. Jones. Present. Mrs. Mayo. Here. Mrs. Vada. Here. Okay. All right, we have a quorum. Um, let's go to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America, to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God Individual liberty, liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Thank you, uh, Superintendent. Um, in, so we, we have public comment and community comments today. If anybody has any comments, we will not be taking comments um, during the reports of the superintendent. So if anybody wants to uh, speak now, um, please do so. Superintendent, do you see any hands waved or? Nope, don't see any hands raised yet. Okay, so if anybody wants to make any comments now would be the time. Hearing none, we'll move to the consent agenda. Uh, does anybody have any questions or concerns on the consent agenda? Does, uh, does anybody want to take anything off of the consent agenda? I'll entertain a motion to pass the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Motion has been made and seconded. Second. Second. You have that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, moving on to your report, Superintendent. Yes. So we'll start I with uh, the re the. Yep. So, so the, uh, you know, I'm happy to say uh, grade uh, six and grade nine uh, returned in full today. And so we're obviously we're going to be monitoring the schools and the classrooms and the students very closely because as we're looking to expand, we are also doing it at a time where we have cases spiking around the state. So obviously we're going to be monitoring very closely. I do, uh, I will be checking in with uh, our transportation coordinator to see how this morning's buses went. I didn't get a chance to circle around to him today, uh, but I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. And outside of, you know, from what I can, could tell you at the middle school, everything seemed to be very smooth with grade five and six in, uh, in, in full. The, they, they came up with some uh, uh, nice uh, workarounds in the cafeteria to spread out, to, you know, to, to create some additional spaces. So it's, uh, so far it looks pretty good. But uh, what I do wanna talk about, and I, I did just allude to that about cases spiking across the state. It is obviously a concern. You know, we, we're, we're holding our own pretty well in North Smithfield. Uh, the amount of transmission has not been uh, uh, that great. Now, I mean, in totals right now to date at the high school, we've had five students who have uh, tested par positive for coronavirus, uh, no staff. At the middle school, uh, we do have one student who tested positive, but that student was a full distance learning student. So no in-person students at the middle school have, have tested positive. Uh, we have had one staff member test positive. At NSES, we, we did have a, a couple of staff members test positive. Uh, at this stage, I don't 
and Jen, you could correct me, I don't think we've had any students, not in-person students test positive. No, we've had no in-person students test positive. Right. A lot on quarantine, but not well, test. Well, yeah, and th that's that's the other the the other part of it is is quarantine. So what what is becoming uh, problematic and, and we knew this was going to happen and this is also re uh, repeated in districts across the state is the difficulty in maintaining staffing in the classrooms because of the amount of quarantine that needs to happen uh, amongst our staff. So it happens when we have a staff member who gets sick, who has a cold, who has a headache, who has a fever, has a chill and must stay home and arrange to get tested at one of the state testing centers. Now that typically takes a, a pro, a bro, about 48 hours to turn around and the staff member, when it, even if they're feeling better, they cannot return to work until they get their, their positive, uh, their negative PCR test back. And that takes a bit of time. So we have uh, uh, this constant flow of, of teachers and support personnel and administrators who wake up sick and are checking all those boxes that could be COVID probable. And so they must quarantine until the test results come in. We have had situations in which we've had uh, folks within the school test positive and the quarantine uh, orders from the D Department of Health are generally are, are often pretty wide standing. Uh, wide reaching. So we could have one teacher that tests positive, but that one teacher could take, uh, take out um, five, six, seven, eight staff members uh, along with that person because of just, you know, working in contact during the day. So the, what, what is also beginning to appear more now that cases are spiking across the state, our family members of our employees uh, become COVID positive and they need to quarantine and by association, so does our teacher or our support person or our, uh, or our administrator. So the amount of staff that we have that are going on quarantine is going to, is making it increasingly difficult and challenging just to keep regular instruction happening. Now, again, I just want to stress these so far, and uh, I have a wooden table here, I'm knocking on wood, that where the community spread isn't happening within our classrooms. You know, it's coming from outside. It seems to be a lot of outside factors that are affecting our ability to remain open, to bring back more kids, to uh, uh, keep the classes, uh, you know, fully staffed. I can tell you over the next couple of weeks, and, and I was on a call with the superintendents around the state uh, today, we're actually in North Smithfield. Uh, what we have in place is working really well. Uh, I've heard from uh, superintendents in other districts that have 30 or 40 or 50 staff members out on quarantine right now. Uh, I've heard uh, from districts that had to shut down classes because uh, they just don't have enough teachers. Uh, I've heard from districts that are uh, uh, proposing that they switch to full distance learning because they're running into a budget deficit already. They're projecting budget deficits uh, for the year. And in, in switching to full distance learning, they'll at least be able to cut the uh, expenses of, of busing and transportation. So. What, what I'm concerned with is that as districts around us struggle, as districts force to get themselves into distance learning or, 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 or take some other means, it's going to affect us because our teachers live in these communities. They have children that go to these schools. Uh, right now, we have three employees out uh, on, on, on FFCRA uh, uh, leave, which is something that all, all employees in the state have access to. If a school or daycare closes and you need to be home to provide uh, childcare, uh, you have, you're able to take that time out. That's, that's, that's been uh, guaranteed by the government. So right now we have uh, 
we have three three staff members out because of um, you know, providing care for children for, for, for whose schools and daycares have closed. So I'm just putting this out forward uh, uh, that we have to very carefully monitor the situation. Our goal is to remain open, but it's going to become increasingly difficult to do so uh, based on the spike of cases within the state and based on school closures uh, around us. So again, so far, everything we're doing, I, I feel confident. I, I, I feel that our schools are safe. We're taking the right protocols. We, we're, we're doing all the right things. And so far, the data has supported uh, the safety within the school. I mean, obviously, nothing is without complete risk, but we're doing, we're doing very well. I don't know if that can be maintained but it won't come from us. It will come from uh, everything around us. Uh, I don't, any, any questions on what I've just, just gone over right uh, uh, to this stage? Comments, questions, concerns? No, uh, Superintendent, I, I just want to, I mean, I think, I mean, I, I don't want to preach to the choir here, but um, I know that the, right now the number one issue you're doing an excellent job the only thing is the kids that aren't on that are, are not going to school that are at risk um i have a big you know i have a, a big concern we get emails obviously you see them all mm -hmm. um it's not uh, we, i sent out an article um, um a few days ago it's not it's not just our district um, i think our district is probably doing well even though we hear these stories um, compared to other districts, but, um, you know, I don't know if kids are, you know, not responding, dropping out, I mean, what the lifeline is for us to grab those kids and get them back. Um, and I know, I'm sure you're doing everything you can. It's just a concern on my mind that I assume the whole committee's mind. It, it, and it's on ours as well. In fact, uh, you know, I, I, I've said at the, uh, the past couple of meetings that you know when we're talking about bringing back uh, students by grade level, uh, that twelfth grade is at the top of uh, top of my list and, and a lot of our lists. Uh, the the other at this stage, you know, I'm not I'm not prepared to say that we can bring back an entire grade level because of how difficult things uh, are proving uh, to look like over between the holidays. Uh, but that doesn't mean we're not looking at bringing kids back. In fact, uh, we, we, we've asked uh, the middle school teams, grades seven and eight, to identify uh, seventh grade students and eighth grade students who, you know, right now they're still on hybrid, uh, who is really struggling. And we're not talking academically. This could be social emotionally. This could be psychologically. Uh, we're, we're looking to identify uh, those most at risk, those most struggling students, and offer the parents the opportunity to bring, you know, to, to bring, uh, have them come in four, four days a week. Right now, we're, we're still not touching the Monday. And, you know, I, I've also, we've also uh, spoken with uh, uh, the administration at the high school in grades, uh, uh, 10, 11, and 12 uh, to likewise identify those students who are right now at the most at risk socially, uh, I mean, emotionally, psychologically, and academically. So, and de de depending on the numbers and depending, it, we'd like to make an effort to uh, uh, move these students forward. Thank you, Superintendent. Anybody have any questions for the superintendent? Mr. Connell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, not a question, but just really just a comment, kind of echoing what, Mr. Chair, what you said. I think that our department's doing a very good job, and I think that we're really responding to it as, as well as we can. The only two cents I want to put out there as an idea, and not for a vote, but just to kind of throw out there as an idea. I know we talked about getting some community input and some community having a meeting at some point. I think that we would get a lot of support from the community. And I just want to propose 
just throw for a thought out there at this point, an idea that I know was being kicked around a few years ago and didn't get pushed through with the state, but the idea of mentors, having adults in the community perhaps reach out or pairing at some of the students who are having issues, having some concerns, who can speak to an adult mentor, not, this is not a replacement of a, of, a, of a family figure, but it's just somebody else maybe who's in an area that the kid or the student is interested in and they can talk to about, and it's not about grades, it's not about, it's not directly related to school, but it is like kind of facilitated through the school and it could be done online. I know it's, again, I know some states, I, I talk, I, Tennessee has a very big program where they pair up kids with mentors just as a general basis. Uh, and I remember talking to the people in, in Tennessee about this a few years ago. Uh, I'm just throwing that out there as an idea because I think we have a very responsive community. And just, I know we're, we're all kind of struggling. How can we engage those students who are drifting, for lack of a better word, because of a variety of reasons. I'm not going to go into it. I just want to put that idea out there that I think we have a community that would stand up and would really provide mentors. And I'd also say it's something we could do in partnership with a few of the districts. In other words, I'm sure there are people in Boroughville, Smithfield, who might be interested in mentoring kids in different communities. And uh, I just want to throw it out there as a possibility, for, not for discussion tonight, but just something that we can think about for you know, our next meeting and for public support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donald. All right, and, and I just, just want to get you. I'm sorry, oh. go ahead. No, you, you, might have, you might have answered this question well enough already, but um, are the students, and by extension, are the, are the staff members being offered information for resources like BH Link, just for people that might need to have, you know, somebody to talk to, um, just a little extra support and help? I know, it's, I know at the state level, they talk about it a lot. Uh, I know the coordinator for BH Link as well. I've worked there a couple of times and the services they have, it's good to have that, that structure there for people who are struggling with this and might not know where to turn. This is a good resource. So I don't know if that's being offered right now at the district level, but please feel free to look into it and I, you know, whatever you need. No, oh, that, that, that's fantastic. Thank you. And, and you know, to be honest, I mean, the, the state did offer... Uh, when uh, last year, when everybody pivoted to distance learning, they did offer a counseling service. Uh, to be honest, I have not kept up to date or heard if they've, they've continued it. Uh, but yours is a good point to, to find these resources, not just for uh, uh, our own staff, but for family members who are struggling and parents uh, to, to, to also have a place to call and, and get some information and advice. That's good. Thank you. We'll follow up with that. <clears throat> I know our, uh, our psychologists and social workers have, you know, constantly been trying to keep everybody in the loop and uh, uh, providing these additional supports, but I'll, I'll look into that uh, more formally. And ju just, just to give you a little illustration, this is at NSES today. This, this, this is an update from uh, our nurse. So right now at NSES, it... <laughs> They, there's one, one, one staff member who tested positive and is in quarantine. Uh, there's one staff member who's in quarantine uh, for a family member. We have six students who have been in contact with a positive person through uh, either home or through uh, recrea uh, recreational sports. We have five students who are in quarantine because their families travel to a hot spot and they have to quarantine and test before when they return before they can come to school and and then we have 18 students who are in quarantine because they were in contact with a positive person um, at kids club so you can see i mean we have you know about 30, 30 uh, 25 30 students out we have uh, a couple of teachers and again this is this is the cycle that we're going to be seeing more of and we're going to try to uh, uh, work, it, work with. We can't, we can't stop it all from happening, but we're going to try to do everything we can to keep uh, schools open and, and instruction running, as well as servicing the needs of, of our most vulnerable and trying to uh, bring them back in. All right, so if... If, if you don't mind, I can switch over to the enrollment update. Uh, for that, I'm going to share my screen.
Now, here is a, a, a number of years of our district enrollment. This is our enrollment history. And I'm just going to really just point out the difference between 2019 and 2020. So our total enrollment is, was last year was 1648. Sorry, my, uh, I'm getting some messages on my screen. Can you see this okay? Yeah, it's fine. All right, I'm gonna zoom in. So we, yeah. we did lose some students from last year to this year. However, those students that we lost are really due to COVID related factors. So our PK classes have dropped. Uh, the amount of kids in kindergarten ha have dropped and that's largely due to parents looking for five day a week daycare. Uh, right now with our schools only in, in person for four days, we have parents who are looking for a five day option. So once we're able to return to five days, uh, we, we fully uh, expect these students to be uh, returning and our enrollment will, will go up. The other place where we've had a, a decrease in enrollment was, is in the applications for homeschooling. And again, the parents that we spoke to, it, it's really a, a COVID related request for homeschooling. So, so even though we've had uh, a slight drop. It's largely due to homeschooling and PK and, and K. If you look at the combination 2019 as kindergarten students move into first grade, uh, we lost one student. Uh, first grade to second grade gained a student. Uh, second grade last year to third grade this year, we gained six students. Stayed the same in fourth, we gained in fifth, we stayed this, you know, level in six. We gained uh, 11 students going from six to seven. Uh, we gained going from seven to eight and so on. So overall, our enrollments, new enrollments this year, we had 69 new students come in and we had 58 students leave. Uh, of those 58 students, that is the large group of homeschoolers. So essentially our enrollment, our our arrivals, our entries have outpaced our withdrawals, which is a good sign. Uh, of the kids who have came, come in this year, uh, this is from uh, 7 1 last year to 10 23 this year. Uh, we had one student transfer to North Smithfield Schools from a charter. Two Woonsocket residents uh, uh, joined our, our CTE program at the high school. We had 30, 32 students uh, move in. They came, came uh, into North Smithfield schools from in-state. So they moved into the community. We had one student transfer out of a virtual school to attend our schools. Uh, we had 26 students move in from out of state into North Smithfield. And then we had seven students leave their private schools to return to North Smithfield. So overall, even though our enrollments are down, our new enrollments are up and this is largely due to COVID. So when, 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 when the, the COVID period has passed and we're back up to where we were with kindergarten and pre-K and our, our, our students who are in homeschooling return, uh, we should have a, a, a significant increase in enrollment. Now, another good reduction is our out of district special education students. Now, these are our most severe students that require services that we can't provide in district because their needs are so extreme or in specialized. Uh, these are students whose tuitions that the, the district pays for their placements, they can run range between uh, 40 to $50,000 a year to 130,000 a year. Last year, we had 17 students in out of placement uh, 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 locations. This year, at this point, we have 14. So we're working on bringing our students back and providing more services, uh, especially where, uh, for, first of all, we, we want our kids to remain in North Smithfield. We don't wanna have to put them on a, on, on, on a, a bus to uh, go to Providence or some other location. So we're trying to keep our kids local and our kids close to us. And for, for financial reasons also, we. We're trying to reduce the tuitions that we pay. And uh, 
on the on the other side too, as far as revenue coming in, our CTE uh, program is growing. Last year we had four students in our CTE programs at the high school. Uh, this year we have seven. Uh, that's adding three. Uh, plus we have one more student who is pending. We're just waiting for some some uh, records from another district. So our CTE program is growing. I just want to point out our withdrawals. Here are a couple, I'm just going to highlight a couple of them. These are your students who go to uh, pro, uh, parochial schools in state. So your, your Mount St. Charles's, your LaSalle's, your Hendrickens, and so on. Last year, we had nine students uh, withdraw from the district to go to uh, you know, a, a, a parochial school. Uh, this year, only six. So again, that's a good number. We're looking at retaining more students. Transfers to homeschooling. Last year, we had two students transfer to homeschool. This year, we have 15. And again, that was uh, as of a month ago. That number has actually grown. But again, except for the COVID-related transfers, what we're seeing is that we're retaining more students and attracting students. Uh, we are looking at some of the residential construction that's planned. So uh, I did get an update from the town administrator and the town planner as to where these projects are in their, their life cycle. And so there's a few things that, we're, that are still out there like the 128 lot single family subdivision. So that's still, uh, that's still something on the horizon uh, in the years to come. But there are some more immediate things that we're looking at and, and trying to anticipate how they're going to affect our enrollment. And then with uh, out of district tuitions, this is our, our vocational charter and CTE students. And a couple of numbers I'll, I'll point out here. So here are the different locations we have students going to right now. And here are the number of students at each of those locations. I'm just gonna show you this number. So our out of district students back in 2016, we had 39 students going to vocational charter or out of district CTE programs. And we were seeing an increase. Uh, in 2017, 52 students chose to leave North Smithfield schools and to attend one of these charter uh, um, or vocational programs. In, in 2018, FY18, we, it grew to 61. And then in 19, it got to 77. And the concern is, and in, in why I don't like to see these numbers, is that for every student that leaves us goes money. And that's money that is, is, is taken away from our own schools. Uh, we spend more on these out of district tuitions than we do to keep students in our own schools. So we're trying very hard to bring this under control and start stop this hemorrhaging of budget into other communities and keep it in North Smithfield and continue to reinvest in, in our own schools. So we hit 17, 77 students who, who left. At that point, we had started our CTE programs. We had started uh, doing some marketing. We'd started doing some communication. We, we, we were uh, overhauling some of our curriculum. And the 77 dropped last year to 73 students out of district uh, paying tuition. This year, we've had 69 students. All right, now a number of those students were the ones who are already there from you know back at this point. One of the key numbers that we look at are the 12th graders, because the trick is right now, of those 69 students who are at vocational charter and, and CTE programs in other districts, 10 of them are seniors. Our challenge is to have those 10 seniors develop and not be replaced by 10 uh, ninth grade or 10th graders uh, to Basically, we want to continue to shrink this number for the sake of our own schools and also for our budget. Again, between budget and transportation, 
this takes an awful lot of money away from the community. So, but what we're seeing though is a good trend. Uh, we're retaining our students and through our own CTE programs, we're attracting students. Uh, we have students who are, are families who are taking their kids out of the private and parochial schools and then and sending them to North Smithfield schools. We have good schools. And one of the, and, and as always, we try to make it better. And we also try to articulate our pride to the community of our schools, of our teachers, of our programs, of all of the uh, uh, wonderful things that we can offer students, uh, of all the scholarship money our students collect. So again, we have a very strong school system and I think we're doing it right and we're, we're, going, we're seeing our numbers grow. Superintendent, you mind just pulling that back up? I just have a quick question unless somebody has a question beforehand. I have, I have a quick question also. Yeah. Um, so if we reached out to the parents of um, the prep, Maryville Prep Academy to find out what it is that, because I mean, if you look at the numbers, it's pretty clear to me, without that one school, our numbers are actually uh, are looking a lot better, particularly at our secondary. You know, all, a lot of the kids are coming back and so, what is it about the mayoral academy, especially because our elementary schools are phenomenal, um, that that are making parents decide to to go outside of our system? Well, Jen, Jen Dano can can respond, but I can tell you right off the top, they uh, they are basically the combination of NSCS plus Kids Club. They they offer a full day uh, daycare. Okay. So, yeah. I, I don't, Jen, are you on board? Do you do you? Uh, have anything to add? No, Mike, um, actually that, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think the other thing that we're also finding is that quite a few of our families um, are transitioning back after the onset of the school year back to NSES. Um, they're finding the programming is, I don't wanna say too rigorous. I think the expectation beyond the school day um, that are placed on kids, uh, a lot of parents are finding very overwhelming for their students. So throughout the summer and into the school year, we actually have been receiving um, students back and then even phone calls regarding transitioning their kiddos back to our school, so. And, and one of the numbers I'll, I'll point out in this, if you can see back in uh, 2019, we had 28 <laughs> students at RISE. Right. And then it jumped to 39. Uh, every year, RISE has been adding grade levels. Right. And so from the 39 to this year, there wasn't the same increase. So, and they did add another grade level. Mm -hmm. So again, so, so we're also seeing, uh, uh, you know, our, our students going to RISE, we're seeing that leveling off as well. And as, as Ms. Dano uh, uh, said, we're seeing students uh, return. Thank you. Superintendent, are we advertising? I mean, well, is Kids Club running right now? Uh, the... Right now it's in quarantine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yes, in, in fact, we, we, we were hoping, and, and I reminds me, I need to contact Kids Club. They're on the, uh, uh, the brink of a five-star bright star rating, which is the highest for any kind of uh, pre-K or after-school program. And I wanted to touch base where, where, where they are at with that because if uh, certainly if they've, they've achieved that five-star rating, the top of the line rating, I mean, we can certainly do a, a combo bundle of the powerhouse that is NSES plus Kids Club. Uh, the only downside with Kids Club is that there, there, there is a fee involved in it uh, for, for, for families. Which is, you know how much? I don't know offhand. But uh, Ms. Dano, do you know uh, the Kids Club uh, rate? I think, it's, I think it's like $80 a week, but I don't quote me on that. That was from, I think, a couple of years ago. Wow. Uh, yeah, that is... Um... Wondering if we could, if we could, possibly um, advertise on that, promote it, and try to raise some funds for parents that that can't afford it, 
or in the alternative, maybe reduce the overall cost by what we can raise. I mean, I know that's a separate issue, it's down the line, um, but if that's the reason they're moving out, um, and we can counteract that somehow, um, let's at least look at it. Absolutely, yep. Um, are there any other questions, Superintendent? I do have a question, so just if you wanna keep that up. This one? The, the first slide, all the way up, I think. So let me, I'll ask the question and then I'll. So when we're in pre-K, do we get state funding for pre-K? Our pre-K is, is an unusual one. Uh, no, it, right. Yeah, it's. No, no, all right. So what I'm trying to ask is that's, pre-K is from, we try to break even, I believe. I mean, and we charge parents and stuff, right? We, we offer it for, it, it's, it's largely a special ed program, uh, but they, there is a peer model in which we have non-special ed students whose parents do pay a tuition uh, to, to attend and, and they're pair, paired up with a, a special education student. So, so let me tell you where I'm trying to get to rather than, so we lost 11, 11 students there in pre-K. Is there any fiscal impact on that? Except for the tuitions, uh, Lisa, do you want to? Uh... Well, it, pre K is made up of kind of like a, a combination of special ed and peer models. The peer models bring in tuition, um, but the special ed we save a ton of money by keeping them in district as opposed to sending them out. So I'm not sure if that answers your question or not. All right, so we get. So let's go to the second grade. We get seven thousand five hundred dollars per student, right, from the state, or is yeah? And I'm only guessing at that number, whatever the number may be. Whatever the number may be, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do we also get that for our students in pre-K? Uh, I honestly not totally certain about that. Yeah, I all right, no, no, no. and I'm just trying to say if if you yeah. eliminate pre-K and go on a on an angle, you know, it looks good, and I just want to make sure that I'm reading it correctly. Because technically, if you go, let's go to the kindergarten to the first grade, mm -hmm. you go on an angle, right, and that's the same grade. Yes. Right. So so if you go down, it looks good, and if and if if just because pre-K is very low because of COVID, I'm just trying to figure out maybe well, the, the impact isn't substantial this, because this, of that. Yeah, we, we, we our kindergarten registrations are made up of more than just the kids who go from pre-K to K. There are other kids who right. come in from outside from other placements and all that. Right. Uh, our PK is also a uh, half day. And um, typically, all the ride funding, fo the funding formulas are based around K through 12. I can't tell you offhand uh, what percentage uh, PK factors into that. Okay. All right. Fair enough. You can take it down if you like. If, uh, does anybody have any further questions? Seeing none, we'll move on. Mr. Connell, I see a hand up. I don't know if it's from, I can't see you. Is that from before? That's from before, Jemin. Okay, all right. Um, all right, so we'll move on to the informational purposes of the meeting. Um, these are uh, resignations, retirements, leave, leave of absences and appointments. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? This is not something we vote on, it's for informational purposes. Uh, moving on to new business uh, appointments to the Budget Commission. Um, I, I will appoint uh, myself, Mr. Connell, and Ms. Johannes as a public member. I know that's a little unusual, um, but I did rename it as a commission versus a committee, which if it's a committee, it would have to be made up of, of members. Um, 
So anybody have any concerns or questions on that? I think that's an excellent idea, Mr. Chair. Thank you. To put uh, make it a commission. That's great. That public input's great. Moving on to uh, old business, um, the operating capital budget. Lisa, I assume. Um, the reports are in your packet. Oh. I don't know if anybody has any questions. Anybody have any questions? Hearing none, um, I do want to make just make a few comments before we uh, leave tonight. Um, I don't know how many people from the public. I know that the committee is aware of this, but uh, I'm sorry to report that we will be losing two highly respected members of our team. If you recall, there was a change in the town charter and the appointments by the town administrator and the town council will be lapsed indefinitely. It was a pleasure having Ms. Charest and Ms. Johannes as members in the town. Appreciate your time, your leadership and your counsel on many issues. You are a benefit to our children and you will be sorely missed. We hope, hope, <laughs> to recruit, rec recruit you uh, soon on some school and town projects. So don't think you're going away. <laughs> and we wish you the, the best and thank you. We can't thank you enough. Thank you. That, thank that, was, you. Very, that was very well said, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chris and Fran, under normal circumstances, we would certainly be doing this differently, certainly not from afar, but we couldn't let this as your last official school committee meeting go by without properly saying goodbye and thanking you for everything that you have done, as, uh, as Jim said. Um, your commitment and your dedication, but especially your willingness to say, yes, I'll come back when you were appointed two years ago are appreciated as you both are because you've each brought special skills and experience to this committee and we have been better because of you. So please know that we will miss you, but on the bright side for you, um, enjoy your free time after December <laughs> and thank you for being here. Uh, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chair, you Mr. Chair, can, can you make a motion to increase the school committee numbers from five to seven <laughs> and appoint uh, Chris and Fran as permanent members? As an emergency order under the governor's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. It, it's truly, truly been a pleasure to be able to serve with all of you. It, I, and I second that. Um, this. This administration, this school district, um, really has been a pleasure to um, to, to serve. It, it hasn't been difficult because of the, the talented um, personnel, the administration, the staff, the teachers, everyone in, in our school district. Um, I, I just can't say enough good things about you all. You're wonderful. And I appreciate everything you're doing for our kids. Thank you. I'll just echo what everyone just said. Um, Grant and Chris, it's going to miss you. Well, we'll, you'll be, we'll see you around. I mean, you'll be around. But yeah, it's, it's uh, just been a pleasure to work with you both. I mean, I've worked with you both before, but it's been especially a uh, pleasure in these last two years. And I, I, think we've, I think we've gotten a lot done. I think we've gotten a lot done in the last two years. And um, you've both been integral parts of that. Uh, it's, it's just been a very... I think the district's been very busy, very active. We've achieved a lot. I'm not patting ourselves on the back. I'm just saying, I think we, we have done a lot. And I think a lot of positive things. And again, it's, it's one thing I like about the committee. It's, it's a real, everybody contributes something and everybody puts something together. And again, Fran, I've just known on so many different projects and Chris, we worked a lot on the budget last year. And uh, again, it's been a real pleasure and definitely gonna, I was actually thinking the other day, oh my gosh, like uh, the chair just pointed me to the budget. I'm saying, oh, now, now Chris isn't here anymore. Oh no. This is <laughs> <laughs> but but I do get Fran here, so you know we're, we'll, we'll we'll make we'll, we'll make we'll get through we'll get through. <laughs> but they will be missed very much. So you can always call Chris back as part of some future negotiating committee. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you everyone uh, for attending tonight. Um, if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion's been made. 
and seconded. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.